As we focus in on the tilt mechanism, we can see that we have a hydraulic cylinder and we need some type of clevis to attach the rod end to the blue tilt arm. What we want to do is actually open an AutoCAD DWG file of a clevis from a hydraulic cylinder manufacturer. Using the AutoCAD translation wizard, we can actually preview the file before we actually translate it into solid edge. The preview allows us to hide and show AutoCAD layers, as well as zoom and pan around the drawing to see its dimensions and geometry. The AutoCAD translation wizard also enables us to set key translation parameters and map AutoCAD elements to corresponding solid edge elements. As you can see, the draft file looks exactly as it did in AutoCAD. All of the layer information is preserved. The benefit of this is that with Solid Edge's Create3D functionality, we can reuse this 2D data to build a 3D part. Notice how the 2D profiles are automatically aligned to each other in 3D space. We can reuse this data to create 3D features without having to redraw the feature's profile. Each sketch can be used to define the depth of a particular feature by snapping to its key points. Open profiles are also supported for many solid edge features. The extent step in the Smart Step ribbon bar enables us to define the depth of a cutout. Through Next, we'll add the feature to the first solid it encounters. And Through All, we'll continue all the way through the part. The Hole command enables us to specify a hole type, such as threaded, to create a tapped hole feature that matches the thread that was called out in the original AutoCAD drawing file. The sketch geometry then becomes a reference location to place a 3D feature. As you can easily see, Create 3D functionality enables us to reuse 2D drawings to quickly and efficiently create 3D parts that can be used in our dough mixer assembly. Adding part properties is key to creating a parts list. This information can be extracted and placed on a drawing later. Now that we have saved the part file, we will close the document and return to the draft sheet. This too can be saved as a solid edge draft file. Now that we have our standard component modeled from 2D data, we need to add it to our machine design. By activating into a subassembly, we can control how the part is added and at what level the part should reside. Using assembly relationships, we can use a bottom-up approach of adding a component that was designed out of the context of our assembly. Mate and alignment relationships make it easy to accurately place the part relative to the rest of the subassembly. As you can see, this assembly is not fully constrained, and so we can simulate the hydraulic cylinder's movement as the rod is pushed in or out. As we return to the top level assembly, we must mark this subassembly as being adjustable. This will enable us to align the clevis to the tilt arm and have the cylinder rod adjust appropriately to fit the relative constraints. Notice how the cylinder's rod adjusts as it moves into the desired position. The next thing we may want to add to our design is a hydraulic pump system. As this pump system is used in many models of our industrial dough mixtures, 
we have created what we call a system library in Solid Edge. The system library contains all of the subassembly components, as well as individual mounting hardware, part files, and all of the actual mating and mounting features into one complete system. When we drag in the system, Solid Edge automatically recognizes it as a system library and presents us with the captured assembly relationships that must be satisfied to place the system in our design. The final step is to specify the part that is to contain the special mounting features for our hydraulic pump system. In this case, it has added drawn cutouts with tapped holes in their center to accept the mounting bolts for the pump reservoir. It has also added a slot in the sheet metal base plate to align with the drain plug in the reservoir tank. Our next task is to create a wire harness to control the solenoids in our hydraulic pump system. Using the Solid Edge Harness Design Wizard, we can point to a predefined component and connections document. These documents specify the component names and map them to an assembly occurrence. They also map the from and to terminals for each component so the wire path can be generated automatically. Each path is also attributed with a particular gauge and color of wire. Bundling the wire into a cable is also very easy, as all we need to do is select the wires and then define the path for the cable. The cable material is then easily selected from a drop-down list of available cables. Some paths may need to be modified and this too is as easy as double-clicking on a path and modifying its tangent point. A right mouse button click on the harness entry and pathfinder will enable us to actually create the physical conductors on the wire's paths. The next thing we will focus in on is the spider drive mechanism.